I did a video about color contrast in buttons and totally missed something that you probably don't know either. To meet web accessibility standards, not only the text, the button itself needs to have a minimum contrast against its background. What? I thought this was only about the text contrast. If this is news to you as well, tell me in the comments below. It should be at least three to one. And even in Google's material design system, it says you should meet this minimum contrast for buttons and other interactive components. Make sense so far? Then how come that this familiar site can get away with that? To answer this question, we'll have to go deep. But when we come out, you will know what is crucial and required when it comes to color contrast for your design. You will have some practical examples how you can meet web accessibility standards as a visual designer for your next design project. So it will be more inclusive and future-proof while meeting legal requirements. Ready to get going? Then let's pimp that contrast or type. Hey, I'm Oliver, your typography coach, helping you to boost your design with some pimped typography. And you know what's important with type? That you can read it! And not only you, as many people as possible. That's the idea behind accessibility. And if that wasn't enough for you, you might wonder, why should you care about it even more? Well, short and drastic answer, it's the law! There are already plenty of national policies and laws in place that require accessibility. And from 2025 on, for many European companies, this will become required with the European Accessibility Act. But besides all this legal stuff, much more important to me is the idea behind accessibility, which Eric Eggert told me about. Eric is a specialist who worked for the Web Accessibility Initiative, that part that is responsible for WCAG, the rules and guidelines we have to follow to meet accessibility standards. Eric told me, Make your website as broadly welcome as possible. You know, let's face it, the world is not super inclusive. That's why we have those regulations. Everyone can be disabled at some point. Doing accessible design makes your product better for everyone. And then you have like broadened your audience a lot. Okay, you got this. You're fully invested now. But what does this mean for color contrast now? Your text needs to have a minimum contrast of 4.5 to 1 for normal text, 3 to 1 for text larger than 24 pixels and 3 to 1 for bold text larger than 19 pixels. Don't get confused by the WCAG. When you look it up there, it says points, but you'll have to calculate this in pixels, which is the thing we love on the web. Fairly easy to understand and you can use a Figma plugin or other extensions or your dev tools to check if your contrast ratio is met. Now let's take a look at my hardest button to button example that did not meet the required contrast. I created three versions of it. The first with a darker background, the second with a lighter background and darker text, and the third with an increased font size, so I can use a less dark background and meet the three to one contrast ratio there. All good, until I got a tweet from Mike Mai. So I reached out to him and asked, What's wrong, Mike? You had a very light background of a button against a white page background. So it wouldn't pass a uh, three to one color contrast there. Whenever there's a uh, interactive control, you're gonna need to clearly show the boundary of that control. Otherwise people won't, won't see the background of the button. They just see the text. That way they might not know if that's a button or just plain text. Mikey is referring to the success criterion for non-text contrast. These success criteria are the things that you'll have to meet so that you can say that your project counts as accessible. Okay, so an interactive component needs to have at least a color contrast of 3 to 1 against the page background. Knowing this now, I was fairly surprised to see this low color contrast in the filters on YouTube. Never would this pass an accessibility audit, or would it? 
To understand this better, let's go back to my failed button example and explore some options how you can make this work. The simplest way of doing this is by adding a border around it. I prefer using the text color, so it will become a ghost button. But you can use whatever color you like, as long as it has a 3 to 1 contrast ratio at least. Now thinking about this again, color contrast is very relevant for people that have a visual impairment or a certain degree of blindness. And that's the hard part here to us as designers, because it's not either fully sighted, everything's working fine, or and because this is hard to imagine, there are these guidelines to have a minimum standard that will work for more people with a slight impairment. Basically everything that has a lower than 3 to 1 contrast ratio, you treat that as the background color. And if you have the border around it, it's much clearer for people who can't distinguish colors as exactly as most people can. Another approach would be leaving the background as it is, but adding an icon. Working, but it comes with a little disadvantage in usability. So showing that boundary would, would be more helpful, allow people to know where to click, like they don't have to click exactly. This problem remains when we underline the text, but this also would pass because it adds an additional signifier that this is an interactive component. By the way, if you like this video so far, why not hitting the low contrast button below? Now let's make this a bit more challenging and get closer to the YouTube example. What if I did not change anything about the design and just arranged these two buttons in a row? The context can give me a little bit hint, but still, without that contrast, it's gonna look like a plain piece of text. Mike says not good enough, but let's take a closer look at that success criterion with Eric. Only visual information that is absolutely required to identify the component. If the user interface component is already identified by its position, because it's bold, because it uh, has other signifiers, you don't need to conform to that rule for the background colors, basically. You still always have to conform to the text contrast. This last example, where I did not change anything about the buttons, I just arranged them in a row, would pass because of context. Context. In context, like if this was a save and cancel button or something like that, you would probably say like, oh yeah, I probably can click this. So you don't require the contrast. Would YouTube then pass, Eric? Yeah, I think this is okay. The definition of user interface component is also a little bit like flexible in terms of how you would interpret that. So in this case, you could say the whole thing is the user interface component. And one of those is highlighted as selected. And then, you know, this has enough contrast. Also, there's no way to confuse that with something else that's going on in the same space. It makes sense to say like, yeah, I think people can distinguish that. I would pass that in an audit for sure. Mike sees this differently, but both agree that WCAG is only a minimum requirement and you should strive to do this better. Only because YouTube does it that way, it doesn't mean you can't improve. And YouTube could improve as well, like I did it with my button. For example, by adding a border around it or by changing the background. Maybe this is too striking now. I actually liked it a bit better the way it was before. Maybe I'm focusing on the wrong thing here now. I can say about the search input there, that very, very light gray border also doesn't pass. It's a search input, of course. This is really hard to see. So making the border darker would improve this for impaired viewers, but also for normal sighted visitors. Everyone wins. What can you now take away from all of this for your next design project? Contrast guides visual hierarchy and these minimum requirements are there so that most of your visitors are covered by the standard view of the site. So remember, for regular text, always a minimum color contrast of 4.5 to 1. For large or bold text, 3 to 1. For icons and graphs, 3 to 1 again. And for UI components, 3 to 1 at least, or additional signifiers that show that they are interactive. Also get this summary in the typography blog, link is in the description. Remember the principle behind all of this. 
information and user interface components must be presentable to users in ways that they can perceive which is always a good rule of thumb for design, isn't it? With that in mind, make your next design more accessible to more people. It's simple, it's only contrast and see this as an opportunity and a challenge to improve and grow as a designer. Another crucial skill as a designer is mastering visual hierarchy, which you can learn about more in this video. Many thanks to Mike for making me aware of this and to Eric who also has a YouTube channel linked below for answering all my questions. But now hit that high contrast button that says subscribe and see you in that next video.